Right, hello there. So today, continuation with our bubble pipe. <clears throat> Excuse me. So with the continuation of our bubble pipe, what we're going to do is add a post to this. So the question comes up often that how do you add a custom pose to an accessory? So an actual accessory in terms of, so this bubble pipe is an accessory. So how do you add a pose to this? Well, ordinarily you can't because the accessory system, the skeletal system that accessories use in IMVU do not accommodate poses or any other avatar based object. So you can't pose an accessory because the skeleton that's used to attach this to the avatar is a completely separate subsystem of the avatar itself. So the attachment or the accessory skeleton essentially locks onto the corresponding bone of the avatar. So in this case, it's a head bone. And that means that the accessory skeleton is completely detached from the avatar. So a pose that the avatar does can't be linked up to the accessory using the accessory skeleton. So it's a little complicated, but basically the accessory skeleton is completely separate to the avatar skeleton. So anything that's done to the avatar is always completely separate to anything that can be done to the accessory because they're completely different systems. So how do we add a, set, uh, a pose to an accessory item? Well, we generally speaking, we have to use the clothing tool. What we do is we set the accessory item up essentially as an item of clothing. So it gets a mesh ID that allows it to be locked onto uh, the clothing skeleton. And because it's locked onto the clothing skeleton, anything that is done to the avatar skeleton will apply then to our, well, it's a body part accessory, air quotes. So that's what we're going to do because what that then will allow us to do is load in that mesh. So once it's attached to the clothing tool, we'll then be able to load that project into the animation tool to then create the pose. So it's a little convoluted because of the way that accessories are set up. So if you've already created your accessory as we have done here, we have to do another two steps. But if you were going to start your project from the beginning and you wanted a custom pose with your accessory, you would just start off from the clothing file. So you would load in the clothing tool and then you'd go into the animation tool. But if you've already built your accessory and it is a, an accessory, you've published it to the catalog as an accessory, you have to do the extra step. So it'll all make sense as we work through it. Oh, there is one caveat to doing this as well though. Um, Setting the accessory up as an actual accessory, as we've done here, allows us to add custom bones to our skeleton. And this allows us to have our particle effect targeted at a specific bone. If we want to use a custom pose, but we still want our particle effect, we have to set up the particle system in a slightly different way because we can't have any additional bones added to the avatar skeleton. If we do that, it'll generally break the skeleton because it, again, because they're completely separate subsystems, the avatar is a separate system 
to everything else. And if you change that, it'll break the skeleton. So we, we have to do things in a slightly different way if we want to set up particles. So again, right, so with all of that explained, so what we need to do uh, before we do anything, actually, uh, make sure, just to make this easier, that in your... Let's just reopen this file so we've got back to the original. So in your accessory project, so this is using the attachment tool, and we've set up a proper accessory. We want to select the mesh, object, data, and just make sure that we've given the mesh a name to make it easier to identify when we do the next step. Whoops. Mesh. Just save over that, that's okay. So actually no, just save a copy. Eight. So first we need to set up the mesh as a body part accessory. So new file. So we're creating a new project. Make sure nothing's selected. And then we want sidebar, eye view toolkit, and we want the clothing tool. So make sure nothing is selected, otherwise the clothing tool will be disabled. So append clothing file. That's the clothing skeleton. And then what we want to do is just change this to the default male. And then we need to append or import our mesh. So file, append. Browse to our bubble pipe number eight. Double click. We want object folder. So we're importing, where's it gone? Objects. We want to find our pipe. Oh, there it is, pipe low dot mesh. So select that. What we want to do before we actually import select scene collection so highlight that make sure that's collect, uh, selected and what that will do is it'll bring in the project well bringing the bring in the mesh into the root of our scene uh, there is a reason for this and it's basically to keep the toolkit from getting confused when we append new data so make sure that's highlighted and we can do that whilst the file browser window is still open. So that's okay. File, append. That brings in our pipe and the armature skeleton that we, or the accessory skeleton. We don't need that, but we'll just leave it there for now. So what that does in selecting, let's just minimize these. In highlighting scene collection, that drops in our items into that collection. Otherwise, it might drop itself into one of these. And we don't want to do that because these are specific to the tool and the functionality of the tool. And it can break the tool if we do that. And make sure that that's always selected. Whoops. Right, so... We don't need the armature. So we can either delete that or just hide it. First, we've got to set up the mesh. Let's just frame selected. So we're going to refocus the scene on our pipe so that it rotates around that. So this is now going to be a body part mesh. And for that, we need to weight paint our mesh to the skeleton. So we can do this in a couple of ways, but we do have an option in the toolkit for that. So if we select our mesh, 
and just click on bind to armature it'll do all the relevant bits and what we'll find is that our mesh if we select that it'll now have well, it's got two armatures that's the previous armature that was assigned so we can get rid of that one so we've got a new armature that's attached to the skeleton so that now means the skeleton when it's in pose mode should control our pipe and it does but if we look more closely, the pipe isn't moving quite as we expect it to because if we select the mesh out of pose mode, select the mesh, and we go into object data properties, we'll find it's got a whole load of vertex groups assigned to it and each one of these corresponds to a bone of the avatar so what we need to do is check the weight painting and we'll do this in solid mode to make this easy to see we need to check the weight painting of the bone assignments whoops so these are our bones and each vertex group is an assignment to the mesh and because the object is not behaving as we expect it to, come on, there we go, it means we have more than one bone assignment influencing our mesh. So we've now got to clean those up. So mesh, for that we can go into weight paint mode by just clicking the button, paint weights. That'll flip us into weight paint mode. Our mesh will turn blue. And what we can do here is select from the list vertex groups that influence, or we suspect, influence our mesh. So we've got attachment node head. That's a carryover from importing the accessory file. So we can actually get rid of that one by clicking the minus button that removes it get rid of it completely we don't need it it'll interfere with this project and then what we want to do is scroll down the list so there's head and i don't know how clear this will come through on the video but if we go back to avatar master root there is a slight color change. And I suspect neck. No. Nope. Yep, yeah, so neck. A couple of the neck bones are influencing our mesh. We actually only want head for this particular object because of its position relative to the avatar's mouth. So we can select head and using the weight paint tools at the top here. So we've got weight set to one, that's the default, and we've got the strength set to one. So that means when we paint over the mesh, everything will basically turn red. Or well, that's what we're looking for. So click drag. We're just painting everything red. There is an easy way to do this, something like this. If I can remember where it is. So if this was a big mesh and we had to paint a lot of stuff the same color or the same influence, an easy way to do this Instead of using the toolkit and weight paint mode, 
So we're going to toggle out a weight paint. So just click the button again. What we can do is select the mesh, toggle into edit mode. And what we'll get is a series of buttons appearing under the vertex group panel. What we can do is select the head group, make sure everything is selected on our mesh. So select all. And then we just click the assign button. Actually, before we do that, let's just test this. None. So we can select groups in the list and then click on the select and deselect buttons to see what's influencing our mesh. So that is, that is, and that is. Let's try the spine bones as well. Nope. What about the clavicle? Yeah. So we can see there's quite a few bones errantly influencing our mesh. So we can confirm that by doing this in edit mode and or we can use paint weights mode. But this is a quick way of assigning a single value to an entire mesh. Select all, select the vertex group, and then click assign. And then we can double check using select and deselect. And then if we go back into weight paint mode, so mesh selected, paint weights, our mesh is now completely red. And in this instance, what we can do from this point, toggle back out of weight paint. And as we only need the head bone or the head group, delete everything else. All the, make sure we're uh, not going to accidentally delete. We'll click the minus button. And that removes the group and any influence it has on the mesh. So these ones, in deleting these, it'll also delete the influence. There's the head bone, so let's scroll all the way down to the bottom and delete all of these. And there's a lot of them. So now, if we toggle, we can toggle into pose mode by clicking the pose button move our bone, our head bone, the pipe moves the way that we expect it to. Again, toggle out. So let's just move this to the side a little bit, make this a little bit more jaunty. Little bit more Basil Rathbone Sherlock Holmes ish. So that's our pipe. Double check, select the bone. So it's again, it's the head bone. None of the other bones influence it. Perfect. So if you've made your item as an accessory item first, so if you'd done that, as we did before in the previous uh, video segments, if we'd created an attachment tool 
attachment project, we append it into the clothing tool, the mesh, remove the skeleton because we don't need it. So we can either delete it or just hide it. It doesn't matter which. We then have to tidy up the mesh a little bit in terms of, whoops, removing the additional, well, the imported modifier. Let's just rename this. Bind the mesh. So that happens when we bind the mesh to the skeleton, clothing skeleton. So we'll get another armature modifier. So we'll have to, that's what we mean about deleting or tidying up the modifier assignments. And then once we've bound to the armature, we have to tidy up the weight paint groups or the vertex groups, the weight painting. And it's best to, I mean, a, a quicker way, an even quicker way of doing it is, so in this particular instance, we just had the head influencing our mesh. So rather than doing what we did, an even quicker way of doing it is just deleting all the groups that are present in the list, leaving only the one that we want. And then that will either automatically assign or it'll automatically correct itself in terms of the vertex weight assignments, or if we're still out, we can just go into weight paint mode and correct that. And we don't have to worry then about messing up any of the other groups, which shouldn't be there anyway. Right, so once we've got that, save it, save as, and this is, what version is this? It's pipe. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Oh, number eight. So this is number nine. Right, so that's step one, per se. So if you were, so what I was going to say, um, yeah, so if you had your, if you'd already made your accessory as an actual accessory, then you go through the append and import process. Otherwise, you can create your clothing tool project and build your accessory in place and set it up in the same way that we've just done. So you can miss out essentially one step by doing it that way and just building it straight into the clothing tool. But only do that if you were going to create a pose for your avatar. But there's another way we can do this. So right now this is a an accessory body part accessory. So this essentially replicates the accessory that we've set up before. So let's just load that. And that was number six. So what we've essentially done, let's just hide that, is basically replicated an accessory, but as a body part. Now, if we wanted to do a pose for this, we can do one of two things. We can either leave the mesh where it is and pose the arm or do the pose relative to the mesh, or we can retarget our mesh to the part that's going to be posed and then create a pose. So this becomes a functional tool, let's say in the hand of the avatar. 
and the pose is that the avatar's hand moves up is posed at the avatar's mouth so we've got two one of two ways that we can do this we can leave the mesh where it is set up as a standard body part accessory so it's locked to the head bone or the corresponding bone or we can retarget it and reposition the mesh at the body part that's going to be moved and posed so that's we can do that now so that's the so what we did is option one and what we're going to do is option two so in this case we want to target it going to it's going to toggle into edit mode so we can do this one of two ways we can either just manually move the mesh into place or if you want a bit more precision you can select the skeleton go into edit mode select the bone that you want snap the where is it snap the cursor where is it oh cursor to select it there it is this is what happens when you use when you use the shortcuts for everything it's forget where all the menu options are um selected to cursor a uh, cursor to selected and then we can snap once we've done that toggle out we can then snap our object to the cursor so selection to cursor so these options change slightly depending on what mode you're in like so so if you wanted more precision let's say you were creating a, a wristband or a watch or something but we don't really need that precision for this so all we need to do move our pipe to place we have to keep in mind that we have to position the pipe essentially backwards Is that going to be so this is where it gets tricky so you have to you have to kind of anticipate the pose Which can be tricky. And what we want to do here is change the group to the bone that's going to control this. Is going to have control over this and as this is at the hand that's going to be just toggle into so we can use lf hand or lf wrist let's go with lf hand so select the mesh double click lf hand make sure the case 
names the labels the case sensitive so we can double check that if we switch to pose mode we should find yep the pipe does move with it so that's what we need to do as a second option in terms of creating our pose with our object so we'll save this save as 10 and then what we do next create a new project using the animation tool so new general make sure nothing is selected toolkit animation tool so click on append animation file that loads in the avatar and this time we want to append number nine number ten object pipe low and again as before make sure scene collection is the active collection so highlight that and then append and this will probably bring in it has done brought in all the bits and pieces from the closing file so we can't select them by default initially anyway because the animation tool is in pose mode we're in the mode to, to create the pose so we have to toggle out of that temporarily object select the avatar let's have a look in the outliner so there is our avatar there's uh, all the bits so again clean up what we should find actually is that we might not need to do this so but we do need to get rid of clothing avatar so again either hide or delete that so delete and with our object we need to go into modifiers and we need to select from the object list so it's got our armature object still active you can either select it from the list or use the eyedropper and I think it's the control arm no it's not that one it's the other one there it is and you notice that it instantly latches on to the element that it was parented to essentially previously so anim there it is in the avatar's hand and all we need to do now is create a pose let's just save this so that we don't lose this and 11 So let's create a pose. I need to switch back to pose mode. Oops. So at the top. And then we can create our pose. So in this case, we want to make pose, enable make pose. and then enable auto key so click the button and that will mean that when we pose using these control elements so that's the g key to move r key to just specifically rotate and 
and create our pose. Whoops. Undo. And as we're doing that, every time we move something, we get a marker appearing in the timeline. might have to go back to and this is where it does get tricky because as we said before you have to anticipate so that's what we've got with the which doesn't look right, obviously. So we would have to go back to, that's a very awkward, cozy pipe. We do it on the other side, actually. I wonder if, uh, no, that's not going to work either. So, So this is where it gets tricky. I mean, unless the pipe needs to be smoked upside down. So for something like this, it might be a case of creating that initial pose. And then going back to the clothing file to position the mesh so based on what we've got so far in order to get this mesh posed correctly relative to the avatar in the avatar's hand so let's look at the so that was number 10 open don't save number 10 and uh, I'm 10 no oh uh, yes no that's the right one so here we want the pipe so we want the pipe basically pointing that way out from the palm of the hand. So here we would need to set that up so that kind of looks backwards. Let's turn it that way up. It's pointing out of the avatar's hand. So let's try that. I'll save as, we'll just call this 10B. What we can do let's just quickly save this as eleven B. What we can do is append ten B object pipe again make sure scene collection is active uh, 
then import. So toggle out of pose mode because we can't select anything whilst we're in it. Select skeleton, delete. Select the pipe. Set up anim as the object. There we go. So that's better. So we can hide that one. And then we can pose around that one. So there is a bit of back and forth between the two files. So now let's switch to local orientation to help pose the bones. And then we can create our pose. Be a little tricky to find the I say Watson. Oops. Hack, got to watch out for. wrist twisting. When we get too close to the avatar's head. So this is the bit that's a little fiddly. Whoops, undo. So there's a bit of wrist twisting there. Hopefully that won't come through in the in the export. Yeah. This is where we have to play around a little bit with the pose. That looks okay.
Right, so that looks okay. So let's save this file, save as. Of course, 12. That's our pose. And for this, because we only want to export this section of the avatar, make sure that this is disabled. We don't want that, but we do want make pose. And then all we need to do is click on export. That exports the pose. And we want to go back to the pipe and export that so we have two FBXs. Two, so we've got the pipe FBX. So we've got all of that set up. Just double check that the pose is, yeah, that's okay. And then just click export. So select the mesh, export. So now we should be able to assemble this in studio. Using empty clothing file. So create, let's just minimize that, create. We want clothing or clothing. Empty mail top. Let's try this, see if it works. Arrive. So first import the pipe. So that was what number was that? Oh no, that was a clothing item, wasn't it? So clothing. There it is. So the tool prepends the tool a tool identifier. So as an accessory or an attachment, our exports are appended attachment. As clothing, they're attached, uh, they're prepended clothing. So there's our bubble pipe. So select. So set up FBX, that's preview. That's okay. That's all right. So we want a custom mesh ID because we don't want to interrupt the defaults. So these are okay. We don't need to do anything with these. That's okay. Override meshes. Next. It's got our textures. That's okay. Next. Review. Next. And there is our pipe in the avatar's hand. So that's step one. Let's double check. Yep. Let's just save this file, save as, because I don't know if this is going to work. Where's this pipe seven? No. Next, import the pose FBX. And that is appended animation. Now, where did that save that? Should be.
in here somewhere. Let's just double check and resave that. Let the pipe, not pipe, the armature, we're in pose mode. Oh, one thing we forgot to do, we can rename the armature, uh, not the armature, the action, so that we know what it is. Save. Re-export. Export it as pose underscore bubble pipe. Pose underscore bubble pipe. There it is. Pose underscore bubble pipe. So import, let's see if this works. So we don't need any mesh stuff. There's our animation. View, there's the animation. Import. Components. Action. Create our action. And we want to call, call this stance dot Igor, if I remember correctly. Samples. There's our assets, so it'll be listed here. There it is. So we want zero, uh, not zero, we want frame one, frame two, and then infinite. And what this should do, let's apply preview, should. Oh, it's not doing it. Why is it not doing it? That's okay. Maybe we have to use a different, um, different derivable. Okay, so let's try the empty mood. So that's ten million nine hundred forty-five thousand nine hundred and thirty. The ID empty mood derive. So repeat the process. Import the bubble pipe first. Set up FBX, arbitrary, mesh ID, everything else is okay. Next, as the materials, next, review, import. And the bubble pipe is there, but we just can't see it because the pose the avatar is in. So there it is. There. So next, FBX import, we want the pose. That's okay, that's okay. There's our animation, review, import. So component, action. Click a new action. We want this to be stance.idle so it plays whether the avatar is sitting, standing, or whatever it's doing. Ensemble. There's our pose. We're in our asset list. Set that up to one and two. Infinite loop so it plays all the time. Apply. Let's see if this works. Uh, 
avatar. Ha, huh, that's not working. Why isn't that working? There we go. Not sure why idle doesn't work. So there's our pose, but what it should mean is that the rest of the avatar, although it's not doing it at the moment, the rest of the avatar should play through its default sequences because that is what disabling or leaving this off does. When we export a pose like this, all it's doing is essentially exporting uh, the pose data associated with the bones that have been moved, because otherwise Where is it? Yeah. So it should be ignoring all of these, whereas it should be not ignoring these. I might be able to test this again using, let's go with 191, the actual avatars. So the base avatar, see what that does. So import FBX. Clothing bubble pipe. It's okay, arbitrary mesh ID, images, that's okay, okay, import. Now it's done that because we imported another skeleton. So we have to go back into component, skeleton, and reset the asset. Female 04, well, anime, whatever it is. That will reset the avatar and we'll have our product in the avatar's hand. So now we do the same thing again, importing the pose. There it is, pose bubble pipe, open. Set up FBX, uh, don't need any of that, that's okay, that's okay. There's our pose, review, import. And again, it'll dis, pardon me, it'll distort the mesh. As again, we've brought in another skeleton. So skeleton, asset, reset that. Back to anime. But what we should find now is we can add an ensemble to standing and sitting, or we can create our own. So add starts dot standing, create our ensemble. Select our oh, po, pa, pa, pipe pose. Set it up as one, two, infinite, by preview. That's kind of weird. It shouldn't be overriding the defaults because we haven't got that set up. So that could be something you need to run past the toolkit team just to double check. 
But what that should be doing is fixing the arm, but leaving everything else okay. But essentially, that's the rather... There are quite a few steps involved in doing these posed accessories. But as we can see, we've got our pipe where it needs to be, and the arm is posed where that needs to be. Just need to figure out what's going on with the rest of the av avatar. But that is how you create a long-winded process of creating an accessory with a custom pose. So it's a little bit fiddly, to say the least. Devas pi 8. So, yeah, the tricky part is orientating the mesh in anticipation of the pose that you're expecting to create. So placing the object in the hand, for example, isn't necessarily going to be something that um, you might need to play around with that might need to go back and forth between the pose which is what we did between the pose and the clothing file setup in order to get this positioned correctly relative to what it should be doing so that's going to be the tricky part aside from the fact that there's multiple steps and there's all sorts of things that could go wrong in the in the interim but that is creating a custom pose for your accessory items. Oh yes, I'll run this I'll run this issue past the team. Double check that it's doing what it should be doing because that's completely overriding the avatar, which it shouldn't be doing. But anyway, that is the process of creating a custom uh, body part mesh ID accessory attachment with custom pose. Yeah, that's uh, a bit fiddly, but it's certainly doable. Right, so we'll call it quits there. And obviously the next step would be just to submit this to the catalogue in the same way that you would do with anything else. Uh, right, so we'll call it quits there, and uh, we shall see you on the next stream, whenever that is. So, bye for now.